The digital twin's reward is what you make of it. Streamlining programs upstream of the shop floor allows you to make better programs so the machines are more focused on making chips. This means more profits for the shop. Today we're going to create this Iskar grooving tool holder. And this is a cam fix, which is basically the same as a Capto interface holder here. And as we move this around, I can see that this is a left-handed holder. Uh, this holder I downloaded from the machining cloud, so you can go to the machining cloud. And when you come to the machining cloud, you can pick Iskar. You can click on search for a tool, and then you can pick this first uh, turning and parting tool. I picked exterior grooving, and then I picked uh, basically their CamFix exchangeable uh, inserts here. And the one that I'm doing right now, I believe, is the C5, um, C5 GHDL-3, GHDL-3, which is this one here. You, this is going to basically work for all of these inserts. So going back to a spree here, um, I'm looking at this tool, and the first thing that I want to make sure is that the orientation is correct. So in a spree, when we make tool holders, the z-axis wants to go up into the clamping unit, up into the static tool block, up into the uh, tool holder that is going to attach to the turret. So when I say up, if this is a face-mounted tool, it's basically going to go along you know, the machine z-axis in that case. Um, but the Z is always going to be toward the next item that this interface is with. So this is correct. And we're going to leave that alone. Uh, the next thing I want to look at is the side that the insert is on. And the red arrow is my X arrow. And I want that paint, uh, uh, pointing toward the spindle or the, you know, the work holding. So in this case, you know, this is a G, a GD, GHDL, so it's a left-handed tool, and if we use our uh, left thumb, i sorry, not our left thumb, our right thumb, so it's pointing toward the left, uh, we can see that uh, this is oriented correctly. So the material is going to feed inward. Um, and, you know, basically if we unwrap that, we would be feeding the tool to the left. So this is actually positioned where we need it to be. Everything is correct. If I look at this from a top view, everything seems to be aligned, you know, uh, correctly. Um, you know, nothing is rotated. I've seen some of these where they're slightly rotated by like three degrees or two degrees. It's hard to tell. So you have to uh, be very careful about that. So we're going to go back to looking at this from this view here and look at the insert. So when we look at the uh, machi uh, machining cloud, they have two step files. One is the detailed and one is the light. And the detailed actually does not include the insert. The light does include the insert. So. Um, what I'm going to do here is just verify kind of the width of this. I can click on that edge and I can look at that length down here and see what that length is. So if we did a calculation on this, you know, we're looking at 0.1217, let's just say, times, times 25.4. Uh, this is a three millimeter insert with the radius, what is it, it's like 3.2 or something. So this is a three, a three millimeter, it's a dash three holder. So I am going to come over here, rotate and zoom in on this, uh, this fillet right here. And I'm just gonna make sure that under my selection filter, uh, I have, I'm gonna turn off all my bodies and I'm gonna turn face on. There we go. We grab this face, I'm going to right click inside of the solids tab, and on the solids tab we can go to 
uh, you know, the home and show hide and make sure that your solids tab is checked so that it's visible. We want to right click in here and say select a bounding box or I mean create a bounding box. And that is going to create this corner that we need for Esprit's tool definition for the insert. So what I want to do now is just verify that this is at Y0 effectively. And to do that, the easiest way that I found is just come to geometry, or I guess you can, you know, if you want to click on this and, and look at the properties, you can see the properties. It's actually off by uh, two thousandths. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to say rectangle and I'm going to pick this corner. And then when I do that, just hit the zero key on the keyboard and hit enter. And you'll see that it shifts that over. And this is the point that I'm going to make my, um, my tool tip at. So my tool adapter position, my TA is going to be right here. So I'm going to come to work planes and I'm going to call that a TA underscore three millimeter. So that when I create an insert here, I know that it's going to be a type three or a three millimeter insert. So um, now at this point, I can come to the selection filter and just basically uh, come and zero that out. Or you could hit the disable and enable key here. Uh, that will allow me to pick whatever I want on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that insert. I don't want that as part of my GDML because if I have that in there, I might get some collision warnings because I'm going to make an insert that Esprit is going to generate that's going to sit right on top of that. So I'm just going to say delete that. I have everything positioned correctly. I'm going to come to File, Save As, and then come down here and save it as a holder file. And you can see that I've got a few here. I'm just going to save that in addition to those. And we're ready to check this out on the machine. Okay, so we have the machine open and I have an existing program with some tools on there. And it looks like we've got a couple of open stations. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the exterior sheet metal off so we can see things a little bit better. And looking at this, uh, I see some uh, station 12 and station 10 are open. So let's right click on one of these. And the first thing you would want to do, this is under the tool assemblies tab. So, you know, when you want to create tools inside of TNG, you're doing this under the tool assemblies tab. So I'm going to right click on station 10, add an adaptive item. And here I'm going to come to my data folder and I'm going to say holders. I'm going to come down here to WTO. I know I have some WTO tools here, uh, DMG Mori. And then this is a BMT60 machine, uh, NLX, NL 1500 to 4000. Uh, okay, so down here we have a C5 OD turn main and sub. This is perfect. Yeah, so this looks good. This comes in on the station that I uh, added the adaptive item. And now when I say OK, I can right click on that adaptive item and say add another adaptive item. So we're basically stacking our GDML solids just like we would in real life. So here under data, I was creating some under uh, this folder here, turning, grooving, cam fix, inserts, and then it was this one. And we can see the preview. This is, uh, this is something that is a, a Windows function here. Just make sure that you have your preview going. And that should appear, and it does, uh, right where we want it. And now uh, I'm going to say OK. And on this Iskar CamFix insert, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say Add a Turning Tool. And here I'm going to pick, obviously, a Grooving insert. And when this appears, um, well, it actually looks like it appeared over here. so. Uh, this is fine. Uh, what's interesting about this, though, is if you have a if you have created a tool previously, and you can see here that um, these are all zero. But if these were not zero, 
if these were, let's say, you know, 25 millimeter, we'll just do one inch, one inch, um, make it four inches long. You can see that if these were not zeroed out when it appeared, Esprit wants to generate a holder, a square shank, I should say, and the insert. So depending on what you did last, you know, we want to make sure that these are zeroed out. And that is going to put that insert there. Let me check the width on here. So this is an eighth inch width. Um, we're going to do uh, three divided by 25.4. <clears throat> Sorry, you got to put an equal sign there. And that's a 118. Uh, I think with the radius, the actual insert's a little bit longer. I mean, a uh, wider, but uh, just for now, we'll put that in there and that's fine. Uh, at this point, I think you guys get the gist of things that uh, this is all you have to do to create a, you know, stackable uh, Capto Camfix style, uh, you know, insert for a clamping unit like this. So now we are ready to go ahead and use this for programming and cutting some stuff on the machine.